Hi! Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to come on here and I know it's been a long time since you've probably seen my face. It's It's been a long time since I've appeared on camera, but today it just felt appropriate. Today I wanted to do kind of like a, a wrap-up video for the whole year. I wanted to talk about my favorite decks of 2023 as well as how my practice evolved throughout the year. I just... I want to start off by thanking all of you. I want to... I want to know that I'm really grateful for every single one of you and a lot of you've reached out over the past couple of months and I'm very appreciative of it. I think that having a YouTube channel is incredibly powerful and it's been a very unique experience for me. And I'm just, I just think it's such a wonderful thing. And I really do enjoy inspiring others to create whatever it is, to create art, uh, inspiring you guys through your own spiritual journeys. And just, I'm, I'm so excited to share my knowledge and experiences with you as well. And I'm so, uh, I'm so blessed and, and thankful. And I'm very excited to see where this channel goes in the future as well. So before I get into my top five decks, I have some honorable mentions here. Um, I think I've mentioned this deck on my channel <laughs> a few times, um, or I think I might have just mentioned that I was thinking about this deck, <laughs> thinking of getting it and using it for inner child work. This is the Wonderland in Tarot deck. I got this because, as I've mentioned so many times on my channel at this point, I've been doing a lot of inner child work. And this deck has been very interesting to work with, to do inner child work. Sorry, my camera doesn't want to focus. There we go. <laughs> it's been, um, the deck has, it's almost like a dual energy. The deck... The deck does a wonderful job at merging the two series, the two Alice in Wonderland series. Um, I think it's through A Looking Glass as well as Alice in Wonderland. And in the imagery, honestly to me, it looks like Alice is a bit older than the, the age that she's supposed to be in the series. So she, to me appears almost as though she's on the cusp of um, adolescence. To me, she's, she seems almost like she's about to either turn like a preteen age or a teenager. Um, she does appear older to me. And I've been enjoying using this deck for inner child work as well as um, young adult work is what I've taken to calling it. So um, and just really tapping into my young maiden self. This deck has, it's very liminal. I'm very, um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm very drawn to uh, liminal space theme decks and I find that this one it has a lot of liminal energy and I know that the series is based off of Alice's dreams so and like I said again um, like I said previously in the video Alice appears as though she's about to turn into a preteen or even like a teenager to me and that could just be because the deck wants to speak with me regarding matters that um, it wants to connect with my young adult self, uh, not just my inner child. So it, that could be why I perceive Alice to be a bit older in this deck. So take my word with a grain of salt. And I'm still getting to know the deck, but I think 
think that it's worth mentioning here because I've been enjoying the experience of connecting with this deck and doing the very specific work that I've been doing with this deck. So that is my first honorable mention. My second honorable mention, if you're not new to my channel, you probably know that I am a big fan of this deck. This is the Wild Unknown Tarot by Kim Kranz. Who doesn't know about this deck? This is one of my favorite decks. This is also the very first tarot deck that I purchased. And although I didn't learn tarot with this deck, it was a deck that I immediately came back to once I had learned enough about tarot to be able to work with this deck. And I find this deck to be very raw. It's very powerful. It connects to my intuition. Or I should say it helps me connect to my intuition very, uh, very easily. And I think that the imagery really packs a punch. And I find the deck to be very honest. It's very confrontational. And it's easy for me to get quick messages from the deck. And I've come to really appreciate this deck as time goes on. I do find that I work with this deck more and more as I get older. And I appreciate its messages as I get older as well. And it's honesty and it's rawness. So those are my two honorable mentions when I compiled this deck list. I realized that I just had such, I had so much fun during the Samhain Sabbath or Halloween as you might refer to it with my card work. I think I enjoyed my card work the most during that period um, of this year. So. This is the Deep, Dark, and Dangerous Oracle. It's by Stacey DeMarco. Uh, I don't know why my camera's not. There we go. The backings are so cool, and it's like a crimson red metallic gilding on the edges. This deck, it's cliche, it's corny, but I think that's why it's fun. And it paired very well with the Sow and Sabbath and with Halloween. It has um, like underworld figures. It has, it features a lot of different myths throughout the world. So you have from several different pantheons and I think that's why it paired very well with the Samhain Sabbath. And it just has, it has a very unique voice, I think. I don't have anything like this in my collection. And I think that it's very easy to read, at least for me, I could get a lot of information just working with this deck intuitively. <clears throat> the guidebook's not bad. It has, I'll show you, has a decent amount of information. So you'll get your card meaning here and then you'll get a little bit of information about what myth uh, the person or the figure, I should say, on the card came from. So, and you get a duality meaning as well. So uh, this one is Sybil, you have truth, untruth, clarity, and opaqueness. So, I enjoyed working with this deck because the imagery, 
like I said, I found it very easy to connect with this deck intuitively just by the imagery and I like how cliche it is. I like how corny it is. It has a very take it or leave it personality and it just, it doesn't seem to care. It, it's just very fun. <laughs> And I think this is one of the reasons why I enjoyed the card, I enjoyed the, <clears throat> I think this is one of the reasons why I enjoyed the card work so much during the Halloween time or um, the sa the sound set it. So it's decks like this one, um, as well as another one that's on the list. And I just find working with cards around that time of the year, it's, easy because there's so many options and, and selections, but selection. <laughs> Third deck on this list. You might not be surprised. I've mentioned this deck a lot recently on my channel. A Compendium of Witches. It's published by Low Scare Bayo. And I have been enjoying the experience of this deck. It has some of the most beautiful imagery I've seen in a long time. You have a lot of witchcraft related items and figures presented throughout the deck. So you have tools, familiars, and witch archetypes. And I find that this deck, it's very powerful. I like to pull a card a day to go with my tarot reading or tarot spread that I like to work with. And it works really well as a clarifier. I find that this deck gets to the heart of the matter and it's excellent for big picture reading. And I also like to meditate with the figures. If I pull like the laborer, for example, if I pull this card, I like to meditate with the messages that come through with that figure. So this is a compendium of witches. Um, I like to pair it with just about any tarot deck that I'm working with during that season or sabbat and it just I find that this deck works really well with other decks I haven't had any issues with this deck um, like I said I tend to pair it with whatever tarot deck I'm using with on uh, whatever tarot deck I'm mercury retrograde is hitting me really hard today <laughs> I tend to pair it with whatever tarot deck I'm working with on that particular day and it doesn't seem to have any issues, at least for me. So if you're somebody that likes to pair your decks with whatever deck you're working with, it might be a great option for you. If you like, if you're attracted to the imagery, you don't mind that it's you know, witchcraft focused. So next deck on the list is The Witch's Tarot by Burning Paper Hearts. This deck has nudity, so if that offends you, you might wanna skip ahead to the next deck. It is very powerful when it comes to shadow work. It, I'm pretty sure was specifically created to do shadow work and I find the imagery very thought-provoking. It stirs up a lot of emotions and it stirs up your intuition as well. So I find that this deck is wonderful for the journaler and for somebody who is interested in shadow working. Um, it's an excellent deck for anybody who likes to read their cards intuitively as well. The creator of this deck created a guidebook that has, I think, just a couple of key, like, keywords, basically. There's no um, card meanings. There's not very much information. So if you're a beginner, 
you might want to work with this deck intuitively um, as well as with um, either another guidebook or a tarot uh, 101 book or a tarot information book. Thankfully we live in the age of information so there's lots of information online, there's dedicated YouTube channels as well, so plenty of resources out there. I would just go with one that works for you and um, resonates with you. I also have a review video. I think I have it's like an in-depth review video that I did maybe a couple of months back on my channel. So I'll link that video in the description box below and you can check it out. I went into some of my favorite cards, what they mean to me, and just a bunch of different thoughts on the deck. But if you're looking for more information on this deck, you can always check out that video. I will be slowly adding reviews onto my channel as time goes by. So the next deck is the Trick or Treat Tarot. I'm sure some of you aren't surprised if you've been watching me for a while. You probably know how much I love this deck and I have um, a review video as well on my channel where I explained how I basically used it for the entire month of I think November or October. I can't quite remember at this time right now but fell in love with this deck. I absolutely love the imagery. I think that the costumes presented throughout the deck give this deck a very unique personality that helps it um, play multiple roles. So you can use this deck for so many different things. Shadow work, you could do a card a day, just as some examples that I can think of right off the top of my head at the moment. but. The deck is very powerful because, honestly, I think because of the costumes. It's um, a Barbara Moore deck, so the guidebook's not bad. It's a Llewellyn deck, so mass market, very easy to purchase. You can get it just about anywhere. Um, the only issue I had was the cardstock. Uh, this most of my Llewellyn decks apart from this one are fine but this one for some reason got really banged up and I don't ripple shuffle I just uh, overhand shuffle so I was a little surprised to see that but it's not too bad so my top favorite deck this year and it has a really unique spot in my heart as well as in my collection. It's the Botanical Oracle. It's by For Strange Women. You can purchase this on Etsy. It is an independent deck. It's um, independently produced. It is my favorite deck. I use this deck only to speak with Hecate or Hecate, however you want to pronounce her name. She is my matron goddess and I think that this deck speaks, it's very, it, it's, it's very her and so far I haven't found another deck that can take its place for that. <laughs> it is, um, it, all the imagery was created for the company that produced this deck. They create perfumes. So all the imagery was created for their perfumes. So this deck, um, unfortunately, I think because it was created for perfume and not created specifically to be an Oracle deck, uh, the guidebook it really does lack a lot of information. You just get a little pamphlet with the deck. Um, and it comes with just a couple of keywords, um, just a little bit of information about what each card represents. 
I find this deck works excellent um, intuitively, and I want to do a full review on this um, on this deck. I want to do a full in-depth review. I want to go over what some of the cards mean to me and how I like to use this deck. I did quite a few deep studies on this deck over the course of several months. I'm probably going to do another one, to be honest with you, because I just love working with this deck with Hec uh, Hecate. Or Hecate. I've been calling her Hecate lately. <laughs> So, I just, I think this year was a very interesting year. So, if you're new to my channel, um, I recently discovered that Hecate was a significant guide of mine. And I guess I'll keep showing you some of the cards <laughs> as I continue talking. And as soon as I realized that and I started working with her. It opened a lot of doors for me and this year um, I did a lot of significant work. Inner child work was a huge theme of mine that I'm probably going to continue as time goes on into the new year. Some significant work that I've had to do was opening myself up. Um, as well, and that's something that it, it was very important um, for connecting with my deities, my guides, um, as well as just the people in my life as well, as well as being really present and grounded in the moment. That is a huge thing that I struggle with that I've been working with very diligently this year significant amount of the work that I've done this year has been that because I realized like my thoughts would just completely take me away from the moment so many times and it was something that I really wanted to change so that was another huge breakthrough this year as well as a lot of the work that I have done about being a parent, not only to my my daughter, but to my own inner child, um, and creating, forging my own path with that as well, and leaving behind what no longer resonates with that as well from my own childhood. That's been a huge... Um, just a huge thing for me, huge theme in, in the energy work that I do this year. So just a couple of highlights. I don't know, maybe I'll do a more in-depth video on that. Um, I do want to start an inner child series. I'm thinking of making it a series. Um, I'm probably going to start filming that video or those videos. I haven't quite 100% decided yet next week. But that's my list, and um, that is also my wrap-up for this year. I can't believe that this year is almost done. <laughs> it just flew by. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.